Hello guys, welcome to learning microcontrollers. In this video, I am going to show you how you can use the external interrupt of a PIC16 FH77A microcontroller. So let's get started. So guys, this is our PIC16 FH77A microcontroller. It has only one external interrupt pin that is pin number B0, that pin number 33 or port B pin number 0. So guys, uh, for demonstration purpose, I am going to use these five LEDs. As you can see, each LED has one longer pin and one shorter pin. The shorter pin is a ground pin. You comment them and send them to the common ground of your PIC16 F877A microcontroller. Now guys, for the longer pin, you will not connect them directly to your PIC. You will need a uh, safety resistor that might be from 100 to 300 ohm. I am going to use a 220 ohm resistor like this. So guys, connect your one end of your longer pin of your LED to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this. Do it for all five. Then from the other end, you select the digital input output pins you are going to program for the demonstration purpose. I will connect the top LED to the pin number D7, the bottom most LED to the pin number D0, uh, the second last LED to the pin number D1, third last LED to the pin number D2 and fourth last LED to the pin number D3 like this. This is only for the demonstration purpose. If you have any other circuit, you will have different configuration. So guys, for the purpose of external interrupt, that is the pin number B0, we will need a button. You can use a simple push button like this. Now to connect the push button, you send one pin of your push button directly to the VCC pin of your PIC16 FA77A like this. The other pin, for that you will need a 10 kilo ohm resistor. You connect the one end of your other pin of your push button to the one end of your 10 kilo ohm resistor. Then from the other end of your 10 kilo ohm resistor, you send it to the common ground like this. Then guys, from the other pin where we have connected a 10 kilo ohm resistor from the same pin, you take your output and that you will connect it to the external interrupt pin that is pin number B0. Remember, you cannot connect this to the any available digital input output pin to trigger the external interrupt. For the external interrupt, hardware configure, there is only one pin number B.F0. In the data sheet, it is mentioned as EXT interrupt 0 like this. So this is the only external interrupt pin present in the PIC16 FA77A microcontroller. Now guys, I will program this circuit in such a way that whenever the circuit runs, these four LEDs will start to blink in this formation. Then they will go off like this, then again go on like this. But as soon as that external interrupt button is pressed, it will immediately go to the ISR routine like this. But as soon as the button is released, it will continue the code like this. So. Whenever the button is pressed again, it will go in that routine and the LED connected to pin number D7 will be the indicator that it is in the ISR routine. So this LED at D7 is basically an interrupt LED, rest are our common code. So in this way, I will demonstrate to you how the external interrupt work. Now guys, let's get to our Proteus. First of all, we make the circuit on the Proteus as well. So for that purpose, let me go to the Proteus. Here is the Proteus. Now let me zoom it in. So there is our Proteus. First of all, go to the libraries. In the libraries, in the libraries on the left, write down whatever the microcontroller you have. Pick 16 fa 7 a is the one I'm going to use. I double click and place it wherever I want. Now again, go back to the devices select a button that is what we're gonna need it's a push button for the external interrupt we take it like this then we will need a resistor right resist res and you will get tons of resistor but you only need a simple resistor so write down resistor like this now you got the resistors that you need place them one here and now let's get the leds component from libraries here write down LED and you will have tons of choices of LEDs. You only have to select the one, these one, any of these mentioned as model blue, yellow, green, amber. I will prefer red, green, okay, like this. Now place them wherever you prefer. I place one here, one here. We will need five LEDs as shown in the presentation as well. One, two, three, four and five. For each LED, we will need a resistor. Also in the demonstration, in the simulation, you don't need it, but 
I will still use it because it's a good practice to have a resistor change its value to 0.22k else LED we go to dim to be used copy it and place it paste it for five times for each LED three four and five so we will have five resistor for five LEDs now let's correct the resistors one and to the LED as shown in the presentation like this for each LED one end will of the resistor will go to the longer pin of the LED that is a node pin like this now from the other pin you uh, correct it to your uh, program pin so this will be D0 this I will connect to D1 third LED will be D2 fourth LED will be D3 now first three LEDs will be the one that will work with the programming I take it from here now this fourth LED that will be go to the D7 that will be the one representing the interrupt like this now the other pin of the LEDs are for the grounding purpose for that you go to the left here click here there is a ground you click the ground anywhere on the screen you prefer you connect all of these together Okay, there is a problem it is merging this here so try to be as neat as possible we give it a new path from here it will be better like this so now common all the grounding pins like this of all the five LEDs then send them to the common ground now for the button you connect the button as well you connect it directly with a 10k resistor and the other end will go to the common ground here so it is common to the ground now this hand will go to the fiber supply again go there in the terminal mode here you have this power click here and you connect it directly to this pin now in the center here you take it to the pin number b0 now see here as well he had mentioned it as i and t it means it's an external interrupt pin and this is the only pin in pic 16 f 7 a so now this is our hardware connection is completed now we go to the mito c for pick for to doing the programming now guys this is the micro c for pick i'm going to use its version 7.2.0 you can use a 7.5.0 or any latest as well so let's get started you once you click the new file and then project then this window appears click on next write the name of the project external interrupt pick 16 f8 a learning microcontroller lm pic 16 f 7 is the one i'm using 20 megahertz is a crystal i'm going to use click on next finish this will lead you to this programming window first of all save your project before doing anything else press Control s this window pops up and click on save okay the project is saved now go to the right in case whatever the libraries you prefer you have to select them in our case we will be needing no libraries because we are only going to use the interrupt now to use the interrupt first of all before you go to the void main you make another interrupt loop write down void interrupt like this like this now make this function inside it write down you have to write down some parameters i tell you what now before that we go to our void main and here we are going to use a port d press d equals to 0 cross 0 0 all the pins of the port d are turned to be an output pins and initially all the pins must be at 0 that no led should be on by default like this give some initialization delay 50 will do fine like this now guys we also initialize the interrupt pin press b dot f0 that is the external interrupt pin equals to 1 as input see 1 means it's an input pin because button is attached to it so while these leds are output pins because they will give a signal out and this will take the signal in now initially because the button is connected in uh, one formation that whenever the button is pressed one will be sent because of that initial state must be 0 initially the this pin must be at zero so that by default it will not enter the interrupt mode like this now we initialize our interrupt parameters for that purpose write down 
INT call this is present in the data sheet as well this register GIE global interrupt equals to 1 it means it means that all the interrupts of your pick are now initialized you can use the interrupt now global enable GIE global interrupt enable pin like this now write INT call register again now INT E equal to 1 now what this mean enable enable E means external interrupt it will enable the external interrupt now guys again write INT call dot I and T F equals to zero. Now guys, this is very important. This is the one we are going to use everywhere. That is interrupt I and T F means flag. This is the interrupt flag. By default, the interrupt flag is equal to zero. Now we go to our forever loop here. We write the code. So what I showed you in the presentation was that port D dot port D dot F zero equals to one that the first LED will turn on as soon as the program programming starts like this and then with some delay I make it 200 the second LED will turn on like this like this now with that will be F1 now with some delay the third LED will turn on third and fourth port D dot F0 F1 F2 and F3 now they will turn off they will go in the opposite for that copy it and paste it again like this and make them zero now before we initialize the interrupt first of all we check this code that is it working as per our expectation you click on build here build and check for message no error you see that I can see no error so it means no error it's all files compiled successfully now we go to the Proteus and check the code for I had not written anything in the ISR this is the ISR routine that we wrote above the void main I had not written anything here so only I am going to check right now is that this code should work as per our programming so we go to the Proteus and the Proteus double click your pick microcontroller uh, write the crystal 20 megahertz is the one I am using click on this browse item and then go where you have saved your code I had saved it in folder this okay this is the code okay I click on run simulation okay okay these are working as required see they turn on and then turn off now when I when I will initialize the interrupt now right now see this button does nothing because we have not programmed the interrupt once we have programmed the interrupt this LED will turn on so let's get back to our coding and complete the code like this so this is our coding now we go to the ISR routine here we write if int con dot int f that is the interrupt flag is pressed equals to 1 that someone presses the interrupt button or one comes at the port B0 pin then what will happen is that port D dot F7 equals to 1 like this port D dot F7 equals to 1 now it will go to the interrupt routine oh sorry it will go to the interrupt routine as soon as the interrupt button is pressed and port D dot F7 LED will turn on I build this code and go back to the Proteus and show you what happens right now. Now again, let me zoom out. I click on run. See the code is working while the interrupt LED is not on. That is correct. So let me. Okay. Now I press this interrupt button. See code has stuck and only the interrupt LED is on now I release this button nothing happens because it has reached the interrupt flag and we have not zeroed the flag see let's go back to the coding its problem in the coding let's make it better now in the coding let me zoom it in you can see that whenever we press the interrupt button it reaches this 
and int con dot int f that goes 1. Now this is the problem. We need to make it 0 by ourselves. For that purpose, I write 0 when if port b dot f0 double equals to 0. That the external interrupt pin as soon as goes to 0. That means the button is released. It becomes 0. Then it will continue the same code again like this. Now it will go whenever the interrupt key is pressed that is B0, pin number B0, 33. The button on the pin number 33 is pressed. LEDs will turn on and it will remain on unless you release the interrupt button that is button at the pin number B0 like this. Whenever you release it, it goes 0 and when it will go 0, then the flag of the interrupt will go 0 causing the program to continue where you have just left it. It will continue from where it was left. It will not reset. So let's get back. Now let me zoom out and click on run the code. See the code is working normally. Now what I do is that I press this button. See it has gone in the interrupt. This LED is on and it had left here. Now I release it. See it continues from the same place like this. See again I press it. It goes there and when I release it, it continues from the same place. This is on because we had not uh, programmed it to turn off. Now we make it even better. Go back to the coding. In the coding here, whenever the code returns, then port d dot f0 or you can make it even better like this. Whenever it enters this loop, before going back, it makes it 0 here like this. This means that as soon as the button is released, first of all it makes the LED D70 and then it takes a flag as 0. It means it returns to the main code from where it just left. So build again. Now let's see what happens. Go back to your programming in the Proteus. Click on run. Okay, the new code is running. So I press this. See, it is in ISR routine. See, it is going like this. As soon as I press it, see, it has left from the third LED and its LED is on. That is the interrupt LED is on. I release it. Interrupt LED turns on, turns off and then it continues the code. See, I press it here. It left here and this LED is turned on. Once I release it, it will continue the code while the ISR routine will be aborted like this. See. This is how the external interrupt in the PIC 16 f 7 microcontroller works. See, I pressed it when it first LED was on. Now, as soon as I release it, it turns off the LED and then it continues the code like this. So guys, I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you very much for your time and have a nice day.